Hey guys, Greg here. Let's talk about three common data structures known as static arrays, dynamic arrays, as well as strings. So let's first talk about static arrays, which is basically a contiguous block of memory with a fixed size. So let's say that it has a size of five. So we'll say one, two, three, four, and five. So we have five positions here and arrays have positions and they're called indices or indexes. So this first index or position is number zero. This is index one, two, three and the last one is always going to be the length of the array minus one so the length or the capacity of the array is five things and so this last position will be the length minus one which is four so if you were to call this thing a here now one of the most common things to do with arrays is ask what is at a certain position so you'd be like okay what is at index two well you would do that generally in code like this so what is a at two and it would tell you in constant time we have immediate access to the arrays position positions, it would tell you in constant time that a at two is equal to three. And that goes for any index. So you could do a at four, and that's going to tell you that the value is five. Now arrays are what we call mutable objects. They are mutable, which means that they are changeable. And so while you can't change the array's size, it will always have five things in it. Well, what you could do is change what's at a particular index. So you could do something like a at four is equal to seven. And so again, in constant time, you could change this value to be a seven. Another thing you might want to do with arrays is check if a certain value is in the array. So you might write this in a programming language like five in a. You're basically asking the question if the value of five is in the array a and you'd want either a true or false answer. So basically what it would do is say, okay, is this one five? No, it's not. Is this five? No. And you'd basically keep asking that until you get to the end of the array or if you found it earlier. And in this case, you would return false here. This is false because five is not in the array. If you were asking something like is one in the array, well then that's actually going to be true. If you look at the very first element here, that one is a one. And so you basically, in the worst case, you do have to scan the entire array to see if an element is in the array. And so this is actually an O of N operation. You have to scan the whole array potentially. The point of big O is that it's like the worst thing possible. The very worst thing that you could do is to go through all of the array elements. It might not take that long it might just be one operation here but in the worst case you would kind of go through the whole array so that's why we use big o now static arrays are very limiting this thing particularly has a size of five things and so if you were to say insert into this array maybe you wanted the second position to be a five and you wanted to keep all of the stuff that you have well you can't keep all of it you could shift it over like this so you could do a shift except notice that you're losing an element you're going to lose what was at the end there if you do this shift. So while they sort of support this insertion, it doesn't really work because you lose an element at the end of the array. And this insertion would take O of N time because you'd basically have to go through and shift all of this stuff over here. Again, if you wanted this position to be a seven, but you wanted to keep this stuff, well, you'd basically have to move this five over here, this two over here, three over here, the four would get lost and you'd basically be left with this array here. So in the worst case, we're kind of shifting all of the n elements. So that's O of n. Now, if you wanted to delete an element, let's say that we actually just didn't want this in the array. Well, what would have to happen here is you need to keep the array as a contiguous block of memory. And this is not contiguous. We have this gaping hole here. So what would have to happen is a reverse shift. You'd have to move this over here, this over here, this over here. And so that deletion is essentially in the worst case, an O of n operation, because you're basically moving all the stuff over that you have to. And and then this is fine because this is at least contiguous. You do kind of have an empty slot here and we'll just represent that as an X. That's okay because you still have this contiguous block of memory here, but deletion would be an O of N operation. Now, as you can see, static arrays are very limiting. They're very frustrating, but they are kind of how underlying computer memory actually works. To do something that you might actually want to do in a programming language, generally you use something like a dynamic array. And so a programming language like Python doesn't even have have static arrays. It would use them way under the hood in like the C language, but you don't really have them in the language. You just use dynamic arrays, otherwise called a list in Python. So what a dynamic array is, is basically an array that can change size. And so here, this array here, it's basically length five. I know we're really only using these positions, but the array's length is technically five. A dynamic array, you can actually change its size. And so if you wanted to have this be a seven, and if you wanted to append 
append. You might hear it called append if you insert at the end of the array. If you wanted another element here and to change its length to make it increase, you can do that in a dynamic array. You could basically just add that in there and that would be fine. But how this is actually implemented under the hood is via a static array. So how this might look under the hood is something like this via a static array. You'd have something that looks like this, one, five, two, three, seven, and eight. And you'd have your same positions here, except this array is static. It has a fixed size. So we'll say that this thing has a length of six. So how is it possible if you can just append to your dynamic array? Like if you wanted to add something like another position here, maybe a five at the end. Well, that doesn't work if you're implementing this via a static array, because you can't just add a five there. That doesn't work. So what would have to happen is that you would have to take all of this stuff here. So you're basically copying those things and then making a new static array. So we'd have these same positions here. But notice how before we had kind of holes at the end there. Well, this is actually quite allowed. And so this array could be bigger than the size necessary. We'd have all of these positions over here, basically copy all of that stuff and then put them in this new static array. And we could have the five here and we could leave some space at the end. Now it's very useful to leave space at the end because if we were to insert another element over here, maybe we wanted a four at this new position of seven, well then that's actually a constant time thing to do in this case because all you'd have to do is just use this extra block and add a four there. Same thing with the next insert. If you wanted to add another position at the end here, maybe a three at the end, that's still constant time because you just use that. However, now is where you have the problem problem because if you wanted to add another thing here at the end you would basically again have to copy all of this stuff you would have to take all of those that's going to be an o of n operation you would have to get a new static array which had room for this so we'll say leave two spaces at the end if you were say trying to add the value of seven at the end well that's fine it could do that because we have a static array that's big enough so as you'll see if you're appending to the end of the array you're trying to add something to the end some of them will be O of one or constant because all you do is just change that underlying memory. But if you're full, well, then you need to get more memory, aka a new array. Well, then that's going to be an O of N operation to copy all of that stuff over. Okay, and this behavior is particularly about the end of the array. If you were trying to insert over here, like a seven over here, well, even though there's space at the end over here, well, you'd still need your contiguous block here. And so you could put the seven here, but all of this stuff would have to shift over, which again is going to be an O of N operation to do that. And if you were to delete at the end, well, then that's actually fine every single time, because all it does here is basically removes that and you're basically just deallocating space here. So you could delete at the end, however much you wanted, you're basically just getting some space back. There's no problem with that. All deletions in the middle or even at the front are going to be O of N because you'd have to shift everything. If you're inserting an element anywhere that's not at the end, well, then that's going to take O of N time to shift all the stuff over. But if you're appending, aka inserting at the end of the array, well then that's actually sometimes going to be constant and other times it's going to be O of N. Now I'm not going to get too into this, but it's important to understand that to implement a dynamic array, well it would be made up of several different static arrays over time. And so if you told something like Python, hey I want the dynamic array, aka the list of 1, 2, a static array might be created that looks something like this, where you have some leftover space at the end. So if you were to append a new element, okay, you can do that. That's going to be constant. That just changes that position there. And if you were to do this again, well, then that's still going to work just fine. You just change that element, but it's a problem when you run out of space. And so it's going to be O of N time to copy all of this stuff here, put it in a new array, and it would look something like this, where you had one, two, three, and four, and then you had a bunch of space at the end, let's say you were trying to add the element of five in here, so you could put it there, and it's gonna leave some space left over. So generally what something like Python is going to do is increment in powers of two. It's basically going to make the static arrays double in size. So you might have something that starts out as size two, and then once that thing got full, it would increase to an array of length four, and then after that ran out, it would increase to an array of length eight, and 16, and 32, and 64, and so on. 
So basically, it's going to keep doubling in size. Every time that you fill up the static array, it'll take O of n time to shift everything to a new array. Otherwise, all of the other ones are going to take constant time. Most of the time, you'll be doing O of ones, and very occasionally, you'll have to do O of n's. So the math works out so that you basically put an asterisk here and say, on average, most of the time, you'll have an O of one time to append at the end of the array. This is particularly when you're regarding appending at the end of the array, that's going to be on average, that'll take O of one time. Now this picture is from Leet Code. It's a really good one. And by list, they basically mean a dynamic array. So an array that can change size. Then to append to the end, because that's a special case, most of them will be O of one. Some of them will be O of n. So on average, it's going to be O of one. And by the way, you might see this called amortized. So what that basically means is just on average, it's going to be O of one. Popping from the end is not too bad. So you just delete something. It's constant to do that. Inserting anywhere that's not at the end means that you will have to shift everything over. So that's O of n. Deleting anything that's not from the end, that again would have to shift everything over. So that's O of n. Modifying an element at a particular index is constant. Accessing an element at an index, that is going to be constant. And if you were to check if an element exists, then that is going to be big O of n to search the whole array. Okay, so that was static arrays in dynamic arrays. Strings are similar, but a little bit different. You generally write them in quotes. So something like A, B, C. Now this is still basically a contiguous block of memory here, but strings are what we call immutable. They are unchangeable objects. At least this is the case in Python. If you're seeing this for a course in C or something like that, you know, this might not be the case. But in Python, strings are going to be immutable. So if you wanted to like append to the end of a string in Python, and make it A, B, C, D, well, that doesn't really work. You can't actually do that. You would have to take this string and then make a new string, which has all of these N characters. So it takes O of N time to do this. You would get those characters and then you would add on what you wanted at the end to make A, B, C, D, for example. So that's going to be O of N time to do that. And pretty much everything to do with strings in Python is gonna be O of N. You can't insert anywhere because you can't modify it. You can't delete anywhere because you can't modify it. Really, the only things in Python that are going to be constant time for strings is, well, they still have indices or positions. So if this string was called s, well, you could ask what is s at 1, and in O of 1 time, it'll tell you that it's a b. And something you can't do is like s at 1 is equal to d, basically changing this to be a d. Well, you can't do that. They're what's called immutable. They're unchangeable. And so that operation just isn't even allowed. Okay, so this is the whole chart from lead code here. We saw the array based stuff. Again, dynamic arrays or arrays in Python are generally called lists and strings, which are we're assuming that they're immutable. There are languages where they are mutable, like for example, C, but if you were to append to an end that's modifying, so it's O of n popping from an end is modifying O of n. Same thing with insertion, same thing with deletion, same thing with modifying a particular element, you can access and see what is at a particular position in O of one. And again, if you wanted to check if something exists, so if you had a string like H E L L O and you wanted to know if Z is in the string, well, you'd kind of have to go over all of the positions to find that out. So that's going to be O of N as well. Okay. Now let me show you a little bit of how we can use these things in Python. Okay. So let's show some code for these operations using arrays and strings. Now I'm doing this in an environment called Colab. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can actually check the video description and I'll have this Colab notebook available and you can actually run that same code on the cloud. So to make an array, you would just give it a name. We'll call it a, and then you use square brackets. So in Python, you generally just call this a list. So a list is basically a dynamic array. And so you'd have one, two, three will be an array of those elements. If you were to output it, you could run print a, and that's going to show you that exact same output right there. Okay. If you wanted to append or basically insert an element at the end of array, well, as we said, that's going to be on average. So on average, this will be an O of one thing to do. Okay. If you were to do that, it's pretty easy. It's just literally a dot append and you can give it say a number like five and so if you were to output a again you're going to see it has five at the end now if you're to pop an element it's pretty easy popping basically deleting element at the end of the array that is always going to be a constant thing to do and so you can just a dot pop and if you were to print a well then you're going to see that without that append that it had if you wanted to insert not at end of the array so anywhere that's not at the end of the array that is going to have to 
to shift a bunch of elements over. So that is going to be O of N. And to do that, Python has an insert function. You'll notice Python continues to be awesome. If you wanted to insert into A, then it needs a position. So at position two, we are going to insert the value of five. So if you were to again to print A, then you're going to see at position two, we're setting that to be five. If you were to modify an element, so at a particular index, that is going to be big O of one or constant time to do that. That would just be saying A at an index, set the value of the first index to equal seven. If you were to print that, you would again see first position changes to seven and accessing an element given an index. So given an index I, that is just going to be something like print A at two. You can ask what is at the second index. And that's going to tell you it's five. Again, this is going to be an O of one thing to do. And if you wanted to know basically if an element, say six, is in the array, well, this if will execute if that's true. So we could just print kind of true here. And that did not print anything, meaning that six was not in the array. But if it was, so say if seven is in the array, then we would output true. And so clearly it is. That is going to be an O of n thing. We'd have to search the whole array to find that out. Okay, so that's all of the array stuff, but onto strings here. Well, then if you wanted to append at the end, so append to end of string, well, again, that's going to completely modify it. So basically what you'd have to do, if you had a string called s, which is going to be the string of hello, and if you wanted to add, say, a z at the end, well, what you have to do is basically get a new string, which we'll call it b, is equal to s plus z. So it's all of s plus the character of z. And if you were to print b, well, that's going to be that new string. And this is going to be a big O of N thing to do because you have to take all of those characters and then make a new string and add a character at the end of that one. Okay, and honestly, most of these operations don't really make sense for strings. You don't really want to pop at the end of a string. That's very rare. Inserting something in the middle, also very rare as well. Really the only things that are going to come up really commonly, you'd probably want to check if something is in the string. You could do if E is in the string S, so we could print true here here. So if that works, yes, okay, it does. So E is in the string. But if it wasn't, if F was in the string S, well, that's not going to execute anymore, because that's not the case. So that is going to be again in O of N thing, you'd have to scan the whole string. And you would definitely want to access different positions in the array. So if you again had the string of hello, you could just print what is at S at two, for example, that would tell you that the third character is an L. Also, I almost forgot for both arrays and strings, they have have a length or a size. And so if you wanted to check the length of pretty much anything in Python, you can just call len and then pass it. So length of a is going to output the length of a. And so if we print that, it is equal to four. So currently there's four things in the array and it's a dynamic array. So this thing will change as you give it more or less elements. And what's very important to know is that in Python, this is actually an O of one operation. So you might think logically to get the length of an array, you might have to go over its elements. But Python's quite clever, and it basically just stores length as a property that it can look up. So it is actually constant time to look up what is the length of the array. Same thing with strings here. If you were to check the length of the string, so that is actually also going to be a constant time or O of one operation, you can again just ask the length of s and it's going to tell you that it has five many characters. Okay, so I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was and have a great day. Bye bye.